Hey everybody, Jeff Antoniak here. Welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. So today I wanna to talk about ear training. This is kind of a big topic and it's pretty loaded for a lot of us. Um, and now I'm talking to the adult amateurs out there. You know that. If you've seen Digging Deeper Jazz videos, any of the previous 100 plus videos, you know these are the folks I'm topic, talking to. And I've had so many people come to me so concerned that they don't have perfect pitch, so concerned that when somebody plays a 14 note voicing, they can't tell what it is. Um, those are fantastic goals, but not necessary. Um, and now I may be making some enemies here, but uh, what we need to know about ear training, I think is very, very specific. And I wanna break it down for you, the two things that I think we need to be able to do are two skills that will take us so far. Now again, for the adult amateurs who are trying to have fun with this music, trying to learn and get better, you guys have the goal of being better a month from now. So if you are not at the point where you're noticeably better every month, time to rethink some things a little bit. Jazzwire.net can help you with that. But for today, this idea of ear chain. So here's the two things that I think we need to do. So the first thing is pattern recognition. Can you hear a pattern in music? That is one of the biggest things you need to do with your ears. So it's, you know, the analogy would be like uh, a black and white floor in a cafe somewhere. Um, I'm not an interior designer. I don't lay tile for a living, but I can see that and I can kind of tell what the pattern is and I could sort of explain how to create it. So I can recognize a pattern visually. Most of us are very good at that, by the way. Can you recognize a pattern in sound? That's what we're gonna talk about. Here's the second part of this, is can you tell when the pattern changes? So again, I can tell that black and white floor pattern. I can also tell when there's a yellow tile in the middle of it. I can tell when the pattern is broken and then when it resumes. That is huge. So I was teaching uh, one of my jazz band masterclass groups uh, this past weekend. And, and if you happen to live on the East Coast of the United States, we have people traveling from four or five different cities to do jazz band masterclass, like working in person. So please let me know if you're interested in that. So we were playing a song, happened to be Ciora by Lee Morgan, and the band got apart. There's there, the first couple measures, there's a repeated pattern and then the pattern changes. And a couple of the people didn't notice that some people changed as they were supposed to, and some people didn't. They kept going with the pattern. And it occurred to me, that is huge. Do you know when we're apart, when you're playing in a band? Do you know when we're stepping together or when somebody broke the pattern? That is the most important thing. So let's look at the sheet. And uh, by the way, if you're interested in this PDF or any of the past PDFs, please write me, diggingdeeperjazz at gmail.com. We'll get it off to you. So on the sheet, what I did here is wrote out an A section of rhythm changes. The song I Got Rhythm by George and Ira Gershwin and then many other jazz songs since. And what I did is I put these little square brackets underneath two of the measures. That is a pattern you need to recognize, a harmonic pattern. Now, when I say pattern recognition, there's melodic patterns and harmonic patterns. So this is a harmony that you need to know. It's called the one, six, two, five progression. Don't know if I'm singing in the right key. So that progression is something you should know. And so I labeled that little square bracket number one. And if you'll notice, it happens again in measures three and four. So I labeled it number one. It's the same pattern, let's call it number one. Now on the next line, the pattern changes. It's not the same chord changes. So I just called it number two. Genius the way I did that, right? Do you like that? It's quite impressive, I agree. And then the last two measures of that pattern, back to number one. So it's a pattern, it happens again. Oops, something changes. Oh, there it is again. Can you recognize that? So let's see if you can. I'm gonna put on a play along track. I'm not gonna play and we're just gonna hear if we can hear that pattern, that is your first goal. If you can hear patterns and then hear when they change, that is, that's most of it. I don't care if you can hear anything else. That is amazing and you can function in a group at quite a high level with that. That is what you need from ear training. 
all the apps in the world and the, you know, these fancy programs and, and, you know, people scare each other with like, oh man, you got to be able to do this and this. And at this school, you got to, uh, uh, I disagree. I think if you can do this, you're in pretty good shape. Then we're going to go on to the second item. So what I'm going to do is repeat the first two measures, that section that I want you to hear as a pattern. This is one of the most important patterns in jazz, the one, six, two, five progression. I've talked about it plenty in some previous videos. Even if you don't know what it's called, get used to this sound, this one, six, two, five. So here's a background track playing that. And now you'll be listening to the bass, I think, to help you hear this pattern. And again, and now it repeats. One, six, two, five, one, six, two, five, one, six, two, five. That is the pattern. And as I said, that is one of the most classic things in jazz. So can you hear that as a pattern? Can you hear when the pattern begins? Listen to it. Top. And again. And again. So that is one of the most important things, recognizing a pattern. Now it may be a two measure chord progression like that. It may be a melody. We're going to get onto that in just a second. But this idea of recognizing a pattern. And with the thousands of adults that I have worked with over the years in live, real settings, that is one of the biggest things, is when they sort of get off a little bit from the groove, get off from the harmony, and can they tell that they're off or are they not sure? Sometimes they can tell something's kind of wrong, but they're not sure what it is. Ah, they, they're a little bit off from that pattern. That is the biggest thing that I want you to get going, recognizing those patterns. And we're gonna talk about how to do that. Now let me do this. I'm gonna actually play the eight measure progression here that you see on the sheet and see if you can hear when the pattern changes and then when the pattern comes back. Here it is again. It changes here. Then it comes back. Listen to that again. It changes here and comes back. So that is about as big a deal as we can get. So we were listening to harmony and understanding there are patterns in harmony. Now, not every song has this pattern. Not every song has a two measure pattern, but the idea that there are patterns. And they often happen in two measure or four measure or eight measure phrases. That's a big deal. If you're learning that for the first time or understanding how important that is, there you go, you got your money's worth today. So um, before we go on to the next thing, actually I wanna give a uh, shout out to a fan of the videos, Liam, in uh, Petaluma, California. He's an actor who sings, you know, musical theater kind of stuff, not a jazz musician at all, but this guy tunes into these videos week after a week, just trying to parse, a, you know, figure out a little bit about what we're talking about to expand his horizons. Like that is the coolest thing I've ever heard of that you know, someone is just so interested and eager to learn that something that's way outside what they typically do, but they tune in to do it. So man, thank you so much for uh, checking this stuff out. And you know, for all of you that are showing up and doing this work, that is the most fantastic thing. So let's move on here. So we've talked about this harmonic pattern. Now, there are patterns with melody. For a lot of us, this may be a little bit easier. So the second item on the sheet, I wrote a song that I'm sure will be famous very soon. I think it's called like the Super Jazz Ears uh, episode number 101 blues or something like that. It doesn't have a title. But um, let me play this thing for you along with the track and see if you can figure out what the pattern is. <laughs> So 
what do you think? Are you going to rush out and buy that album? I, I would if I were you. Uh, okay, so that melody, interesting. Uh, you heard the pattern. You heard a little melody. Then you heard it repeated a second time. Then you heard it repeated a third time. And then the fourth time I played, it was different. So I hope you heard a pattern, a pattern, a pattern, then, oh yeah, not the pattern. So there are patterns and breaks from patterns in melodies. The interesting thing is I played that melody over the chord changes we started with. So my melody went pattern, 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 change, but the harmony, the chords went pattern, pattern, change, pattern. So there was a different thing going on in the harmony than in the melody. Now, can you hold all this in your brain and hear at all these different levels at once? Well, when you practice, you can. But um, just being aware, just listening for one or the other. Listen for melodies and listen for patterns. That's the important thing. That's, and that's number one. That's number one of two things that I want you to do. This is super pragmatic, and that's what I'm here to do, is give you the information that you need to know to make you better on the bandstand, a better musician today. And speaking of better musician today, you've heard me uh, talk about jazzwire.net, uh, the subscription website for many of you adults around the world from 25 different countries now who are working with me on Jazzwire. Here's the amazing thing. Every six months, people at Jazzwire get an evaluation of their playing done by me, exactly by me, nobody else. When you come into Jazzwire, you send in recordings, I evaluate your playing. Six months later, evaluate your playing. Here's the interesting thing. Some people have come up on their six month evaluation recently and every single person is noticeably, noticeably better. And that is amazing. So if you think about your playing, and, and I've been hearing from people like, I have sounded the same for 30 years, and after two months here at Jazzwire, I'm sounding better. And, and these people are, you know, specifically after six months, noticeably better, improved things that they haven't been able to figure out on their own for 20 years. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'd love to work with you. It's, I just love that the platform is working and making people sound better. It's a blast. Okay, let's continue on now. So the second item is um, I want you to be able to, and, and this is related, related to the first one, of course, I want you to be able to hear these bass lines. So how do I know that that first one is a pattern? Well, I was telling you it's a one, six, two, five, but I was singing, ba, 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 ba. And I can't sing at all, clearly, but I can sort of sing that bass line. And here's the important thing. If you can sing something, even a little, that means you know it, you have it inside you, right? If you can recite a poem, that means you know the poem at some level. Okay, so item number two is I want you to be aware of the root motions. We could call it the bass lines, right? So I want you to be able to sing the notes of the bass line. So let's look at item number one on the sheet. This is your assignment over the next week. Can you learn how to sing this famous one, six, two, five progression? You may have to get out a little keyboard or some app you have or get out your instrument and can you sing those first two notes? A B flat to a G. That happens to be an interval of a descending minor third or an ascending sixth. You don't even have to know that. Listen to those two notes back and forth. And can you croak that out? Ba ba. The first, the first note I hit was way too high. I had to adjust quickly. Ba 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 ba. Can you sing that? When you can sing it, you can start to hear it. And when you hear it, you'll be able to identify it. So the first thing I want you to do is can you sing those first four notes? B flat to G to C to F. And I don't care if you sing the intervals up or down, right? It, at any point, you could sing up to the next note or down to the next note. Just do it relative to the, e the interval that's easiest for you to hear or perhaps in your range easiest to sing. Sing the bass line. That's it. Ba, 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 ba. And I've spent many hours at a piano correcting my pitch. And again, I'm not trying to become a great singer. I just want to make sure I'm somewhat close to a C, somewhat close to an F. If you can sing it, you can hear it. So that is the approach here. 
So the first thing I talked about is recognizing patterns. So that's more of a passive thing. That's sitting and, you know, can I recognize what's going on and can I recognize when it changes? How do we do that? You may have had that question. That was a good question. Here is how we do that. You learn to sing that stuff. Now in jazz, there's a very set number of progressions that we see typically, and then it's little exceptions from there. So this one, six, two, five progression is a big one. Learn to sing that. It measures five and six on the sheet. We see B flat and it goes up to E flat, an ascending fourth. Well, in jazz, we see fourths a lot, the circle of fourths. Okay, so if you know how to sing a handful of intervals and fourths being a big one, then you can do this stuff. So that's what I want you to do is just find the privacy where nobody has to hear you and be able to sing these bass lines. And when you can sing the bass lines, you can hear the bass lines. When you can hear them, you become aware of the patterns that are happening in the music that you listen to. And when you go from there, that's where your ears start expanding. And as far as I'm concerned, with 30 plus years of experience doing this stuff, if you can do these two things, recognize patterns and sing these bass notes, everything else comes from there. Everything else will fill in. And if this, these are the only two things you learn how to do, you are so on the road, better than most amateur, semi-pro, I even know pro musicians that have a hard time with this stuff. So don't get lulled into this silliness like you have to be able to identify all these different chord types and everything. That's great. I mean, I, you know, I, I wish you luck with that and you can definitely develop it, but do you need it? No. When's the last time someone asked me to do that? I need to know how to respond in the moment. That stuff comes. It follows from what we were doing here. So you understand the assignment. So I want you to do this stuff though. Probably makes sense in your head, but I need you to go do it. So give it a try. Let me know how it goes for you. If this is challenging, if it's more difficult than you thought. And I want to know what kind of light bulbs go on for you because that's the whole deal here. So we're digging a deep hole into ear training and it turns out it's not that hard. Please don't be scared of it. Jump into it. Let me know how it goes. Can't wait to hear. Leave some comments and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.